Welcome back to the channel, lads. Today, we're back to the graft. We're back on the grind. It's Monday morning, and today's job, we are carrying out two EITRs on basically two flats, um, and we're gonna take you through the process. So I thought I'd make a cool little video of how I carry out my EICRs, the process, what I go through, what I'm gonna find on this one, because you never know what you're gonna find. Some of the things I find on these tests are an absolute joke. I don't know how people get away with it, but we've been given the previous cert, so we've got a little bit of information to go off, but we're gonna go in there, get it tested, go through the process, and take you through the whole journey. So as we had the two previous certs, what I'd done first thing in the morning, I just sat in the van, just writing out two of the flats so I can just go in there, get it smashed out, get it tested. But obviously, I'm going off the previous person's cert. That might not be 100% correct, but we'll fill it out anyway. If we need to change anything once we get in there, we'll change it round, which is fine. So what we've done is we actually use the NAPIT fast test software. Um, so what we've done is we've just list all the circuits, we've put in um, obviously all the circuit information, cable types, reference methods, uh, what breakers they're on, so it's a dual, dual RCD board with MCBs in it, so we've just put all that in there and then we're going to go into the job and get it tested and we'll walk you through it. Through it. So first things first, before we even take the front cover off of the fuse board and start testing, we want to do a visual inspection of the whole installation itself. So it was a decent start. We had all the circuits labelled up. The fuse board was a metal fuse board. You don't get that very often. And then we also had RCD protection with the sticker as well. So it was a great start. Unfortunately, the gland for the meter tails weren't great at all. You could pretty much get your whole finger into the side of it. So we will be changing that and recommending that to get changed. The easiest way to explain an EICR is it basically is an MOT for fuse boards, basically to make sure that the electrician's work is up to scratch and that the property and the installation is up to current standards. Put it this way, you shouldn't be driving a car with no MOT, so you shouldn't be using an electrical installation with an unsatisfactory report. And this one, it was just getting started. So this was actually the mains going up to the flat above. It was an SWA with a little fly lead, and they've just put tape over the singles, which, no, it doesn't make it double insulated. So that has to be noted down, and we're going to be changing that because it is absolute gash. And the worst thing is that Octopus Energy put a fuse above onto this armoured. Like, it blows my mind how people are getting away with doing this kind of work. It is very rough, and this is not how it should be done. So, yeah, we had the bonding on the water and the gas pipes here as well. Recently in the industry, I'm noticing a lot of, like, drive-by certs, doing it on the cheap, just earning a quick pound note. They're doing it for, like, 70 quid, and then just getting paid and signing it off. This is not how it should be in the industry. One, because it totally confuses the customer. I'll be honest, I'm £175 up to seven circuits on my EICRs, but then when I'm charging £175 and old Bob is doing it for 70 quid, the customer goes, well, he signs it off for 70 quid and it's all perfect. But then I go in there and it's totally not up to standard and it is just an absolute shambles. So that is what I'm noticing more and more in the industry and it's getting a lot more difficult to explain to the customers what is actually wrong with the property. Now we've done the visual on the actual fuse board itself. It's time to take the cover off. And this one, it wasn't too bad. I've seen a lot worse, I'm not gonna lie. But just look at the state of the buzz bar. That was hanging on for dear life. The cables, they were a bit of a mess. I'm not going to lie. It's not the worst I've seen, like I've said. Um, the meter towels, it looks like someone's bloody chewed them. Someone got really hungry and decided to chew them. Carrying on with the visual checks, what we do now is we go around the whole property. So we want to inspect the field. So we go around each room, have a look at the lights, make sure they are fixed properly and see if anything's broken. So we go around, check all the sockets, make sure they're all intact and up to standard and also the light switches as well. EICRs are definitely very opinionated and personal preference like I could code something as C2 when another electrician might say it's a C3 but Napit do have a coded book which guides you through every single code for instance if there's no blank in the consumer unit they will put that as a C1 so I like to use that a lot of the time to check and double check what I think is the right coding. With the codings there's four different codings that we need to stick by so C1 
danger present. That is something that needs rectifying straight away. And then C2, potentially dangerous. C3, improvement recommended. And then FI, which is further investigation. If you can't get into a room, you have no access, then that will have to be put down as an FI. Back to the EICR we are doing. This one absolutely cracked me up. So instead of taking the bat box off, instead of taking the trunking off, they just put a label on there. No cables present in this bathroom. Obviously, we haven't got an IP rated fitting onto the ceiling. Like I said, we're just walking around having a visual inspection. You can actually just pick up a lot from just a visual inspection. Um, you can straight away see off the bat if the install is any good or not just by a visual inspection. So we go around just making sure everything's intact. This kitchen ring, these sockets on this kitchen ring, we actually did have a fault um to find so yeah we'll speak about that a little bit later on but after all the visual checks are done it's time to get the tester out and start testing and yeah this is where it went a little bit sideways. so we the first test we started off with was the ze at db so external loop impedance test and this was the reading we was getting so it did actually um test out to 12.2 i think this finished on once it uh run for its cycle i think it was about 12.2 and that is a big no-no so it was a tns system and for that the reading is way too high so we had to contact the dno and pretty much spend all the lunch talking to them on the phone to try and get them out to rectify the fault anyway back to the testing a dead test that we carry out is a ring final continuity test this basically ensures that the ring final circuit is continuous throughout so most sockets these days are wired in a 2.5 ring so what we do is we go to the end of the live cables and then we go to the end of both the neutrals and both the earths and look what we was getting here absolutely nothing what we should be getting is a reading so the live and the neutral should be the same and then the earth should be 1.67 times higher so this means that there is a break in the circuit so this is another fault we're gonna have to jot down i'm telling you you don't know what you're walking into and then the next test was another dead test which was an r1 r2 test we made sure that all the circuits were off via the rcd and then we link out the earth and the live and then this is a test to see that the earth is continuous in the circuit so then we go to the end of line of the circuit and then we test between the live and the earth which for this property they were all good so that was a tick box and then what we do is we go around the whole fuse board as we are the last one in the fuse board we go around and make sure that all the circuits and all the terminals are tight and then the next live test we move on to is the rcd test so with this test we are making sure that the rcd is functioning properly and it is tripping in the correct amount of milliseconds Honestly, it is so important to have RCD protection these days. I've seen it so many times. I've seen plugs that are burnt out, about to catch on fire, but luckily they were RCD protected, so it trips straight away. And the readings we are looking for is nothing over 300 milliseconds, and we only take the one times value nowadays as that is all they require. This test is unsatisfactory. Obviously, we're gonna have to come back once they rectify that fault on the ZE, and then we can carry out some live testings, but there's also quite a few thoughts that we need to find so we just finished testing the first flat and yeah it was all groovy apart from obviously them few little bits that i've mentioned before but yeah we're gonna have to ring the client now and see what they want to do about the uh higher ze um because really uk power network needs to come out sort that earthing out because 13 on a tns system definitely not right <laughs> nowhere near right 0.8 is the highest that we should be getting so they're gonna have to call them out um i'm gonna speak to the client see what they want to do but yeah it's not it's not looking good because really i can only go so far with the testing obviously i can do my r1 r2s dead tests rcd tests things like that but then when it comes to getting zs's it's gonna throw it all off so i need that rectifier to then come back and finish it off so yeah and obviously the flat above is off the same earthing arrangement. So that's good, isn't it? But let's phone the client, see what they want to do. That is job done. We've done flat number two. So we've called up the UK Power Network and they've asked for basically all the information. I'll give them all the information. They're like, oh yeah, we make it 24 hours urgent. And then they're like, oh yeah, can you send us a cover? a letter with a header on first explaining the situation so i was like all right i'll do that so i do that but that's still not enough information apparently so now they need the eitr report but i'm going to be sending them half a report because i can't live test and i can't 
finish the test with the proper readings because nothing's right. So, yeah, bit of a, a bit of a balls up day to be honest. But you win some, you lose some. And today felt like we lost some. Uh, we couldn't get into the second floor flat till about two o'clock, so that was great. We get in there, rubbish board, light fittings, masking taped on. So <laughs> today, <laughs> today feels like a loss, a proper loss. But uh, it is what it is. We're going to have to charge to come back once they've livened it up. Well, once they've repaired the fault. And then we can do our live testing, finish the certs. I mean, I can give them a cert now, but it's all going to be limitations, limitations. And it's going to be a pointless cert, really, isn't it? So, yeah, I'll see, see what they say um, and go from there. But never a dull day in the life of OM, I am telling you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. I am going to leave the video here because it's like four o'clock and I've still got about an hour's journey till... I'll get home. So we're going to finish the vlog here. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've liked the EICR walkthrough. Hope it's helped. But yeah, if you need any work done, make sure you contact us. I'll leave the link down below. Uh, Essex, London, surrounding kind of areas. But anyway, I've waffled enough. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you later. Stay grafting, lads.